We will a uh, good win. Get us three and one overall, two and one in the Big Twelve. Um, excited to see our fans back um, in Mountaineer Field. I thought they were for fifteen thousand or however many we had. I thought they were loud. They were into it. Apologize, we didn't give them much cheer about early, and so uh, so we apologize about that. But we did take care of business. Uh, proud of our players, staff. Um, responded to adversity. I'm not sure a year ago we would have responded in the same way. Um, but about anything that could have gone bad went bad in the the first uh, first quarter there, especially the first couple series. And it shows some fortitude for us to uh, to bounce back and, and take co control of the game right there at the end of the half. And then and really kind of run away with it there in the second half. So um, hit all three phases quickly. Defensively, we're playing with a lot of confidence right now. And uh, guys are flying around. It's really about effort and about physicality. I think we're, we're flying. We're getting multiple hats to the ball. A uh, lot, of, lot, of, uh, lot of confidence. I think guys that are our best players are playing it at a high level. You know, the Derry Stills, Tony, uh, Tony Fields, Tyke Smith, those guys are, are playing at a high level. You know, in this game, we have two turnovers, five sacks, 11 uh, tackles for loss. Um, they average a little over two, point, or two, two yards per play. Um, and, and we're stopping the run. And so th those are what we want to be about. And so it was a good defensive outing. Um, staff and, and is doing a nice job there. Uh, special teams wise, I was disappointed in our in giving up that kickoff. You know, we tried to sub. We've been really good here on kickoff uh, both years. Um, had a little miscue versus Eastern Kentucky with, uh, with a couple subs in. And then we went wholesale and sub, trying to get some young guys some work on that kickoff team. And, um, you know, Puka. You know, he's explosive, but we missed several tackles. Didn't do a very good job. So, that was a disappointing end uh, to otherwise good, really solid second half. Uh, had McGee punt a couple times today. I thought he did a nice job. We'll go back and look at it on film. Um, and so, but I thought special teams, we did we did some okay things. I thought we were able to put a little bit of pressure on their punter a couple times. Um, and then offensively, big day for Letty. You know, Letty has, you know, 195 yards, you know, over 10 point. Uh, 10.8 a carry, and uh, that's special. Um, and I think just overall offensively, we're getting closer. If you look at our, our numbers, you know, they're they're pretty impressive, 82 for 544. Um, but watching it, it, didn't, it probably – I know as a coach, maybe as a fan, they probably didn't always feel that way. Um, we're still getting our way a little bit, you know, whether it's a few penalties, drop passes, whatever it is. Um, but we average over eight yards of play. Um, I thought our guys competed. They didn't allow the mistakes early in the game. Um, to overwhelm them, and that's that's a credit to our offense coaches. I thought they did a good job of keeping uh, positivity with our guys. Um, I, I'm proud of our offensive line. You know, basically played the same five up there for most of the game, and uh, I thought I was proud of how they finished it, and and did a did a really nice job there. And I thought Daggy played much better. You know, we we had you know I think he had three eighteen. It says here. Um, the interception was on a screen pass. You know, that's that's the one he'd like to have back. Um, but we go for 318. We try to throw the ball down the field. Some of them were successful. Some of them weren't. Um, but we probably had, I don't know, 75 or more yards maybe to drop passes. And so we got to continue to get better uh, in that aspect. But we're getting closer. We're getting closer. But overall, I thought it was a good win. And so we'll open up for questions. First question will be from Greg Hunter. Go ahead, Greg. Neil, talk about those receivers. You said early in the week you wanted to play a lot of them. It looked like you did. A um, few drops along the way, but, you know, positives, negatives out of that group? Well, the negatives, obviously, were the were the drops. Uh, the positives were they didn't, you know, a year ago, you know, they probably would have not recovered from that. But we were able to recover, and we got some depth there. And, you know, really started, I thought we um, we dropped the first one. We tried to take a shot downfield on the first play. It's a play that we probably should make. And then TJ goes down early in the game, you know, after the fumble. And so he was out. And then we did we had some drops. I thought they competed on the perimeter. I thought we blocked pretty well. And then we came back. We made some difficult catches too. People don't talk about that, you know. But if you look at it, I bet there was five or more um, contested catches, difficult get, difficult type catches that they came back and make. Right, we need to get better. But um, I thought there's some guys that showed some showed some signs. Next question is from John Antonic. 
Hey, Coach, can you walk us through the uh, Letty touchdown run, third and one? Looks like the, the middle of the field was vacated. Did you see that on the sideline? Hey, you could pop this? You know, well, it was a short yardage play. We liked coming into it. We hadn't, we didn't play much in 12 personnel, so we put both tight ends. I was, it may have been the only – that was the – I know it for a fact. That was the only uh, play to that point that we'd been in 12 personnel. Um, and just an inside zone play, they were they were did a nice job. And I thought Kansas overall uh, did a nice job defensively. I said this on the radio after the game, but they came they, – they've been a three-man front team. Uh, DJ's been a three-man uh, front team really going back to our time at Kentucky, and he remained there at Kentucky after I left and then at Colorado. And then they'd been a three-man front team almost the, the whole time at uh, Kansas as well. Coming off the bye week, they played a ton of four down, um, a really a lot, a lot of four down, more than I've seen them play. Um, so it took us a minute to kind of adjust. Um, but on that particular play, I think they were kind of in a bare front, and they were really squeezing. And the interior part of our line did a nice job cutting off. And then Letty, what, what he's grown into is he's grown into a patient back. And he kind of hung there and then hit it. And then um, that's the thing about short yardage when you sell out, because I think they were in zero right there, is when you sell out to stop it. If you get by the first level, you got a chance. And, and that's what he did. I thought Letty did a nice job getting in the end zone on that and uh, with good ball security as well. We'll go to Ethan Bach. Go ahead, Ethan. Hey, Coach. Uh, first off, congrats on the win. Um, I know it wasn't 60,000 fans, but how was it finally playing with fans again, even if it was at 25% capacity? Was it weird in any way, or what were your thoughts? No, I mean, it's still not as, as loud as it would be on a on a normal Saturday afternoon or what we what we used to think of normal, you know, with 60,000 people in here yelling and screaming and after a solid morning of tailgating. Uh, but, uh, no, the, here's the thing. I'm appreciative of the people that came. And I, I, I'm not apologizing because we won, but I apologize we didn't play very well early to get them involved in the game. Um, but I do appreciate the people that came, you know. And and it looked like um, – I don't want to speak for our administration, but it looked like the crowd did a pretty good job of social distancing. You could see it. Um, when I looked up there, I thought they did a nice job of spreading out. Um, and so our hope is when we come back against Kansas State, if whatever, whatever the – local authorities allow us to have whatever that is we'll get to that number and we create a, a really tough atmosphere here on halloween next is kevin kinder which one did you see in the screen game and the swing pass game coming in was that something you saw during the week or something kind of materialized during the game a little bit of both um, we've got to be able to to utilize screen passes and we've been getting a lot of edge pressure because we've been run heavy. And so that's that's a good answer um, uh, for defenses to do, you know, when you're when we've had when you've had success run the ball in turn in, in inside, especially inside the tackles, um, to bring edge pressure. Uh, Baylor had some success with it in the first half. And so we felt like that we liked our we liked our matchups with our running backs on their linebackers uh, at certain spots, especially to the field. And the screen was one of the ways we could do that. And I thought that's what I said. You know, our receivers blocked really well on the perimeter. Those don't happen. You don't get those screens unless you block well on the perimeter. I thought they did a nice job of that. Next question comes from Cody Nesper. So, Neil, on Tuesday you talked a lot about the defense is built to, to make disruptive plays. Um, is that what was happening today? Obviously, there were a lot of negative plays. But is that where the success came from today? Well, I think it, it, defensive success starts with up front. And in our D-line, uh, we've got some guys there that are doing a nice job that are winning one-on-one -on -one battles. Um, we're mixing it up as far as how we get to some of our pressure stuff. We're not necessarily wholesale pressuring, but we're getting to some what I think are well-designed four- and five-man pressures. Um, and our linebackers, not only, not only Tony Fields, but – uh, Dylan Tonkery and, and Josh Chandler did a nice job today as well. And, and the thing about it is, is you know, I, I started this at the opening. They're, they're playing a lot of confidence, and they're playing extremely hard. And when you do that, all right, and you bring that physical element too, you're going to have success. Sam Coniglio is next. Hey, Coach. Your defense looked very zeroed in the second half. Half of Kansas' drive went to negative yards. What exactly – what right there for you guys? Well, first down. I thought we won on first down. And that's the that's the reason. If you can get ahead of the chains and really own first down, that's something we spend a lot of time practicing um, is first downs. And we won first downs. 
Um, and good, there's some good play calls, some good individual plays as well. And um, but that's what that's what I would chalk it up to. Okay, we'll go to Ryan Pritt. Go ahead, Ryan. <clears throat> Hey, Neil, kind of a two-parter uh, going back to Letty's long run there. Looked like the offensive execution after that was was pretty good. Um, was there a sense over there that that kind of took the cap off a little bit pressure-wise? And then secondly, I think that was his last touch of the game too. How, how difficult, as consistent as he's been, is it to kind of limit his workload a little bit, especially with a five-game stretch here? Well, I, I'm not sure if that was his last touch or not. We wanted to get Sinkfield going. You know, we hadn't done a very good job while he was in the game, not necessarily because he did a poor job. We just hadn't done as good a job with him in the game of, of maybe blocking or getting him opportunities in space. So after we hit the long run, we felt like the game, uh, we were in control of the game, so we wanted to get Sinkfield some touches. And then we are uh, very conscious of, of Letty's touches. We are, you know, we were high. A week ago against Baylor, we kind of had in that 20 to 25 is where we wanted to keep him, um, and it was close. I think he's at – excuse me. I think he was at 23. So, that was definitely a piece. You know, and, and offensively, if you – if after the first two drives, we we did a nice job. It's just we get some penalties. I mean, like today and, – and some of them are just crazy stuff. I mean, today we got a penalty for picking a guy up off the pile. Now – it, it's a foul. I mean, it, it should have been called. But, you know, that takes us from a third and kind of medium to a third and extra long. Um, you know, we throw an interception on a screen pass. You know, when you call when you call a screen, you don't you, – the last thing you think is going to be an interception. Um, you know, we had um, a procedure penalty on the center for moving the ball. I mean, just some, some stuff that that happens that shouldn't happen, you know. And, and so we've got to get those things cleaned up. Um, we did. I thought we moved the ball. This is the best, you know, combined running and passing that we've that we that we played as far as um, in our league games. And so I think it's encouraging. I thought it was a step forward. Are there things that we've got to continue to clean up? And can we be be, be better? Yes, we can be better. Are we going to need to be better moving forward into Big Twelve play? Absolutely. Um, but I thought it was a step forward offensively. Take our final three questions here. Go ahead, Carly Nevis. Coach, you've said in the past Darius is very athletic, but the interception he made probably epitomized what you said. Uh, what did you see on that play? How impressed were you with that he was yeah. able to bring it down there? Yeah, I've never said he's not athletic. I may have said he's not a very good um, – What when we do these games, he's not very – like basketball or whatever. But he, he can he can bend. He's got athletic skills as far as being able to move laterally. That's what makes him special. He's got great um, uh, lateral movement, and his ball get offs exceptional. That was a, that was a heck of a catch. You know that that really was. Uh, it was. Uh, I think it bounced off Taiki. Was that is that who it bounced off of? I think it bounced off Taiki, and then for him to react. But here's the thing, and and this is be this will be one of the points of emphasis for me in our team meeting on Monday morning, is that's an effort play. So the only reason that play happens is because he's chasing the ball. If he's sitting there pass and he just stops. If he's not chasing the ball, he never gets that interception. But because he's doing what we ask him to do and playing as hard as he possibly can, and he's chasing the ball, good things happen. And and that's going to be the message. And without even thinking about it, I know that's going to be one of the plays that I show our team in a team meeting setting. Okay, John, back to you. Uh, curious here, Coach, getting back to Letty. Uh, that second quarter drive uh, when you took the lead, I think he got all of the yards that weren't penalties. Was that when you felt like you maybe had a beat on what they were doing and were able to take advantage of some of those things? Well, we, we came in the game, John, thinking, hey, let's – we've got a – we knew that they're – for them to win, they felt like they probably had to stop us running the football. Um, and that's kind of what we'd had the most success with the last two weeks. So, we came in with the attention, hey, we were going to make a point. We wanted to be in attack mode and we were going to chuck the ball down the field. And we did that on the first snap. Um, then we hit one on third down there. Um, then we fumbled on a big hit. Um, and then, and so we wanted to continue and, and we're, we're, we're always up front. So he knows kind of what's going on. We wanted to kind of get them sp spread out a little bit and then bring him in, but we struggled on those first two drives. So we went back and said, Hey, you know, let's, let's put it in a guy that's really been our best offensive player to this point, which is Letty. And I thought he got us going on the next two drives. Um, and on the scoring drive, we really, you know, he kind of he kind of carries down there. And the final question will be from Cody Nesper. Go ahead, Cody. 
so sticking with Letty, um, the perception with kind of bigger backs like him is usually that they're not very good receivers, but you seem to get him involved a lot in the passing game. Just Is that one of his skills that you might be underappreciated? Oh, without a doubt. And it's something that he's really worked on over the last two years. Um, and I think that's kind of – people, you know, assume, hey, big backs are interior guys. He actually does a really good job on perimeter runs. Um, and he and he's excellent uh, catching the ball of the backfield. He does a nice job, too, of when we split him out. And you'll see that we did a bunch against Oklahoma State. We did a few times today, but we split him out, and he's a good route runner. Um, and we can do that, and we'll probably do that more as we go through the year. Uh, but he's really improved that that piece of his game. Here's the thing with him, and I, and I, I talked about Darius playing hard. Letty has gotten better as his practice habits have improved. And he, he is – if not our best, he's in the conversation on Tuesday and Wednesday when it's work days for us. Like, he he's working. And he, he has high player loads. He hits top speeds. He is setting up his blocks. Regardless if we're going against our defense or going to scout team, every, every rep matters. And as he's done that, as his approach to practice and approach to taking care of his body has improved his his level of play. And he's, on, he's only going to continue to, to, to get better. You know, I think he's he's in the conversation of, with a lot of top running backs in our in our league. Okay, coach, thank you very much. All right, thank you all. Appreciate it.